Hey guys, Meryl here with another World of Warcraft Classic TBC video. Uh, and this time we're going to be talking about what to expect as a DPS warrior in uh, Classic The Burning Crusade. Now before we go into that, um, we got to talk about the reality in Classic. Uh, warriors are by far the highest DPS class in the game. And we're also really the only actual tank in a top you know, tier guild. Um, obviously, nothing against bears, they're pretty good but uh, they have limited application and for the guilds that are really pushing the content uh, you're gonna see basically no bears in those guilds. Now the reality in TBC is quite different. Um, in TBC obviously we have two specs, Arms and Fury, and I would say both are viable in the sense that they are not going to be at the bottom of the DPS chart, right? However, viable in TBC and in Classic have different contexts, I think. Uh, in Classic, um, I personally do not consider something like a ret viable or an enhancement shaman viable just because the damage output is just uh, so, so much lower than that of, you know, a rogue or a fury warrior or a mage that uh, it's not even in the same realm of comparison. While in Classic TBC, even if the class doesn't actually have the same damage output, um, they actually bring a lot more things to the table rather than just their damage, right? And even in that case, even with just bringing a lot more buffs, uh, you're not going to see the damage disparity between a Fury Warrior and a Rat that you see in TBC between any classes, basically. So in that sense, even I, I consider uh, both Arms and Fury viable in the sense that they actually output enough damage to, you know, not be completely eclipsed by the other classes. Which is not saying that they're going to compete with Hunters and Warlocks, just that, again, their damage is okay. So, there's a big shift from Classic to TBC. Uh, you go from being the most sought-after class in Classic to really just fulfilling a niche in TBC. And in very serious and competitive raiding guilds, I think you might only expect to see at most two warriors. One pro and one arms. And for less serious guilds, I think there might be a spot for a Fury Warrior. Though this warrior composition actually changes through time uh, and as we go into tier 6, as we're going to see later on, uh, since I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. So for an arms warrior, uh, honestly, I think you just expect to see one per raid at most. Uh, there's really no reason to bring more than one. Uh, the huge thing that arms warriors bring to the table is a unique debuff in the form of Blood Frenzy which makes you extremely desirable, so it increases 4% of all physical damage dealt to the boss. So that's actually a massive amount of damage, and when you factor in the warrior's you know, own personal DPS and the damage brought to the table by Blood Frenzy, that would certainly make them one of the top DPSers in the raid. Um, now, your own like solo damage is probably going to land you around like uh, middle of the pack, uh, you could, you know, get stomped on by hunters and locks, but you do send your ground versus other classes, and you actually can do, you know, um, a really good amount of damage if you're good, right? Um, there's actually a pretty good uh, skill ceiling to how the, the class is played, and I personally think that the rotation is a lot more involved than basically all of the other classes in uh, Classic TBC at that point. And so another question gets thrown around quite often is, which blacksmithing specialization should I go for? And unfortunately, as an arms warrior, you only have one choice for PvE, and that's swordsmithing. Uh, the fact that you get swords back just puts it so far above and beyond axe, and especially macemithing, that it makes almost no sense to go anything but uh, swordsmithing. You know, like the rage generation that you get from swords back, and the DPS, and when you consider the interaction that it has with Green Fury, uh, make it so that it's just the only choice for PvE. Now, not going for uh, sword spec because you want to do arena really puts you at a big disadvantage, considering the, the, that the fact that your damage will go from you know, like kind of like the middle to top of the the damage meters towards solely you know at the bottom basically. And you also need to consider the fact that uh, you you got a guild right, like you need to look at it from your guild's perspective. Why would they bring you in as a mace spec warrior or as an axe spec warrior when they can just bring in someone else that, you know, has the proper PvE spec? Um, and really, when you look at it that way, there's 
no running away from it and that you are going to have to be sword spec to uh, perform at a you know good enough level and now there is a silver lining though and that's the fact that you actually can swap to maysmithing as an arms warrior at some point uh, but that's only when you get the twin blade of the phoenix from Kelphalos and tempest keep now there's two issues with this one of them is the fact that you know, kt is what some would consider the hardest boss in tier 5, the final boss of tier 5. And the second is that you first need the item to drop, right? Not only do you need the item to drop, you also need to be awarded the item, and you will have competition for this item in the form of, you know, probably a Rap Paladin. Now, this is not saying that they have the same claim to this item, I'm just saying that you likely will have competition, and so that's something to consider as well. Now, things are a little bit harder for Fury Warriors. Um, the fact that is actually, you actually do the most DPS of all of the melee just due to how strong your blacksmithing weapons are and how well you scale. However, you bring absolutely nothing to the table. Uh, you're just basically a DPS machine and while you're good at it, uh, you're hampered by the fact that boss mechanics in tier 5 are really not melee friendly at all. Uh, and you also really just struggle to compete with Hunters and Warlocks. I mean, they just have... Uh, way higher damage output uh, and the fact that they don't have to deal with the melee mechanics and the fact that uh, you know fret is an actual issue in TBC remember we don't have world buffs you know world buffs make it so that tanks scale with fret extremely well uh, and that's just not a thing in TBC now when you factor in the that we cannot you know just dump our fret that just compounds on a problem that we have and when you weigh in the fact that you know warlocks have soul shatter and that, you know, hunters have feign death and misdirect, uh, it just makes it really difficult to justify having a Fury Warrior uh, that's going to have fret problems and not, you know, be able to reach their DPS ceiling. Uh, and why would you bring that over a hunter that can just go crazy and off the pole with a misdirect and then feign death, right? Um, it's just really difficult to justify. Now, all those factors make it so that spots for Fury Warriors at the very top end of gameplay uh, are just not going to be there. However, this is only the case until tier 6, uh, because tier 6 brings a lot of armor penetration gear, uh, and it makes it, so, it makes it so it's a lot more widely available. Uh, and that, combined with the less punishing mechanics towards melee, make it so that Fury Warriors actually scale extremely well, to the point where your guild might you know, choose to instead replace a Hunter with you, for instance, while still keeping the Arms Warrior for the Blood Frenzy debuff. Having that said though, I still think that in, you know, less tryhard guilds, guilds that are not going for world first or, you know, like actively speedrunning and all, uh, Fury is a perfectly acceptable spec. Uh, you know, they do a lot of damage, uh, but you do need a really good tank that outputs a lot of frat to be able to run one. Uh, and that's definitely something that you just need to discuss with your guild. Uh, and it might take some convincing and more data from the TBC beta to actually give us a, a, stronger a stronger argument as to why we should actually run a Fury Warrior. So that was that for that discussion, guys. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what is your guild thinking about doing? Are they gonna run one arms, one Fury? Is it just going to be uh, Fury Warriors across the board? Um, what are you guys thinking of doing? Uh, have you discussed your warrior plans of your guild? Um, you know, let me know. And if you like the content, also let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know uh, what could I have done better. What kind of videos do you guys want to watch in the future? Uh, make sure to just leave all of those things uh, in the comments down below. I read every single one of them because I really do want to make this channel a lot better. And I want to inform you and you know bring my thoughts to you on things that you actually think matter. So if you liked it, please leave a comment, subscribe. Uh, I think only 20% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you'd like to support me, please uh, hit the subscribe button. I, it goes a long way and I really, really appreciate it. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time. Take care.